Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Podcast. Let's take a look at a patient who presents with vomiting, hematemesis, dysphagia. The patient also complains of a fever along with pain and you see that there is a mediastinal crunch and subcutaneous emphysema associated with the patient's condition. Based on these findings, what disease are you thinking? Well, this is most likely an esophageal perforation. The mediastinal crunch along with the subcutaneous emphysema and the patient's vomiting and hematemesis with the dysphagia are big clues in terms of narrowing your differential for a perforation of the esophagus. The esophageal perforations commonly occur because of an excessive amount of vomiting. And so there's erosion that occurs which causes the perforation. What's important to know is that the perforation can also cause increased intra-abdominal pressures because of the vomiting and there's a condition that you should be aware of called Borhoff syndrome which occurs after severe vomiting has been present and this is due to the rupture of the esophageal wall and it usually occurs on the left posterior lateral side approximately five centimeters above the GE junction. Next, let's review how you would manage a patient that presents with esophageal perforation. The timing is going to be really important here. And by that I mean if a patient presents to you within 72 hours of the perforation and the patient seems to have no signs of hypotension, excessive shock-like state, or an unstable appearance, then you should proceed with a thoracotomy or a resection of certain segments of the esophagus along with cervical esophageal gastrectomy. That is if the patient is presenting to you within 72 hours. If the patient presents to you after 72 hours of the perforation and if they're most likely unstable and have signs of hypotension, shock, then you should consider a thoracotomy but first you should assess the severity of the inflammation and look at repairing the perforation and stopping the drainage. Also, resection or exclusion and diversion with cervical esophageal gastomy is a recommendation and patients can benefit from a esophageal split fistula along with a gastrostomy and a jejunostomy. If the patient has a history of any carcinoma, then you should resect the carcinoma. Again, some patients who have a carcinoma and have an unsuccessful resection may benefit from the use of a stent in the esophagus. However, if the stent fails, then exclusion and diversion with gastrostomy and jejunostomy is the recommendation. The diagnosis of esophageal perforation is made by x-ray. So plain x-ray will show you signs of perforation, possibly a pneumothorax. But the most important finding is that mediastinal emphysema. And an esophageogram using barium contrast is beneficial if there is no intra-abdominal perforation. So that was a review of esophageal perforation and the management and approach of healing the patient who presents to you with 
signs of vomiting, dysphagia, subcutaneous emphysema, mediastinal emphysema with a crunch. Thank you for listening to the Comlex Instant Podcast. I wish you all the best in your Comlex preparation and in medical school.